together about a year. Really? I thought it was longer than that. Year and I year. thought so too. What? This You're... lineup, this lineup. Okay. Because we went through a few players, you know, as, as you do. Went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, musicians, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to front a, a cover band that it was the best name I ever came up with. It was called Revolving Door. <laughs> 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 This video is brought to you by Nimble. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local and not-so-local music and the people that make it, including my guests. I'm Josh, and today, my guests are actually out of Los Angeles on tour, and they just, last night at time of recording, played at Red Dwarf Pizza, a place I still have to get to, and apparently it was a really great show, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. They've been described as Western Gothic and Outlaw Country, uh, I met them actually on Instagram. I think you reached out to me. And they are my biggest Room 6 Stop Shop customers to date. <laughs> so cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers to that. If you want to look good like them, go to Room 6 Shop. I got tons of merch with all sorts of cool sayings and stuff on it. Uh, their album, Don't Tell Mama, is out now. Please welcome to the channel, June Clevis and the Diddy Boys. Say hi. Hello, hello. Yay, yay. So, first of all, welcome everybody. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Giggity. Oh. Diggity. <laughs> yes, I'm a giggity. And um, I, I am so so uh, upset that I couldn't make it to the show last night, but I was interviewing another act. So, before we get into anything, what would you say was your best takeaway, or like the biggest, highest takeaway from the show last night? I think just the response. What right. do you guys audience, think? Audience the response. audience response is amazing, man. Las Vegas is great. Thank you guys for showing us so much love. And Red Dwarf, we're going to be back. Russ and Nicole, Nick, thank, thank you guys so much for having us. Yeah, and I, I am going to get to you guys, I promise. I really thought <laughs> I was going to be there at the show, but unfortunately, I, I can't. I don't have content without, you know, making it. So. <laughs> um, that being said, I want to take a quick moment, briefly... For those of you that don't know who June Clevis and the Diddy Boys are, is Clevis, right? Clevis. Clevis? Yeah. Ah! It's okay, everybody does I that. almost asked. All right, <laughs> June Clevis and the Diddy Boys. Uh, for those of you that don't know who they are, thank you for watching. That means you just like Room 6. But go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell them what you do in the band. Well, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm Manny. They call me Manjo, and I play the banjo and June Clevis and the Diddy Boys. And I'm Johnny, and I play the uh, electric guitar. In Duke Clives and Diddy Boys. I'm June. I play the acoustic and um, rhythm and the uh, lead vocalist. I'm Zach. I play the upright bass and I like to party. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I'm Dino. I play drums. And that's about it. <laughs> what I love is the drummer is the only one drinking coffee. <laughs> this is my rhythm hand. All right. <laughs> so this is my good hand. He's having dextrous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho, <Yeah>. giggity. <laughs> <laughs> little bastard shot me in the ass. Interview's going great. Oh, 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 man. <laughs> so, before we get much further, if you want to be on the channel and have fun, uh, get reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using the email address down in the description for Room 6, or click the Room 6 social media link. That's where you can find where I'm at online. You can find ways to support the channel if you want. And also, you can find information down there about uh, my new podcast that I put out weekly about local music shows where I talk about shows like yours. Awesome. I did. Uh, every Monday night that goes out at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I live stream it as well on Twitch, and it, uh, it's basically my chance to say, like, here's all the shows that I'm not going to because I'm busy, <laughs> but it's a chance to say, uh, here's what's going on this week in local Las Vegas original music, and um, also during that particular broadcast, uh, I will show a couple clips from performances that people did in Room 6. Now, June and the boys are not going to be performing today. That Room 6 just can't hold their, their raw power. <laughs> but uh, we're going to go, go ahead and see a music video from them at the end of this interview, so stick around. Stick around. <laughs> Spiel done. On to the interview. Now, mm, I should drink. It's water, I swear. I should just drink water more often. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I do. Did you know they make water out of potatoes? Anyway. <laughs> so, now I, I thought it was just you for some reason in our conversation. I don't know why. And so my questions were geared a little towards just you. So okay. I apologize, gentlemen. I didn't do any research on y'all. But that being said, 
This is a general question. Let's talk earliest musical influence. Okay. Good. And I'm not talking the general growing up musical influence or what you were surrounded by. I'm talking what is that first moment that you remember, I want to do that. What was it? Was it a particular song? Was it a, you saw a show or, or a, a genre of music inspired you to say, I want to start making music myself? You guys want to go like this? Go for it. Go to me. Anybody. Mine was, I was nine years old. My mom took me to go see the original lineup of Santana wow. from the Woodstock stage. Um, and I, it was at the Greek theater in LA and, um, I was watching Armando Perez, I played congas, and I just kind of knew that's it. I want to play drums for the rest of my life. And there, that's all I have to say. I mean, Dan, as where inspir inspirations go, yeah. you picked a good one. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say there was a specific act, because, I mean, for me, I was surrounded by music my, my entire life. You know, all my family just playing a very diverse catalog of music. Um, but I remember my freshman year, I kind of um, just commandeered. One of my friends' bands, like, you know, no one was singing. Wait, you commandeered the whole band? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yes. Because there was, there was a, a four-piece, and we had to sing. They had a singer who was shy, so he didn't sing. So I kind of just pushed him over. <laughs> I just took the microphone, you know. And You had uh, one job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, we played some cover songs, and I remember um, we played Killing a Name by Rage Against the Machine. Wow. And I was just, I just... Channel my my inner Zach Del Roca and just just belted the end of it and like I just felt it you know my, my guitarist <laughs> right my guitarist was like hey man chill out it's just it's just practice and I was like no fuck you I'm in it I won't do I, what you tell me exactly <laughs> yeah. I just felt it I was like nah this is I mean this could be a new director that. for your band yeah the whole <laughs> the sound could shift dramatically yeah uh -huh. yeah so it was just it was just that she's feeling. stomping around. <laughs> yeah, we've done it. She's done it. I believe it. Yeah. So I think that was it, you know? Right on. Next! That's a good one. Um, <laughs> so I had, uh, uh, my dad played music, so he had bands in the 60s, and uh, so he had guitars always around the house, and then um, my oldest brother stayed played music too, and they were in a band, the metal bands, and so it was just kind of cool to... I mean, I listen to music already. Mm -hmm. That's on the radio, but it's cool when you know someone that plays music and you right. see the instruments and the guitars. And so just touching them and seeing them, I was just kind of like uh, influenced by that. And touching the guitars. Touch huh? Touching the guitars. Touching Watching the guitars. how I play them. So I was the like, well, you know, when they're not looking, <laughs> you touch it because you can't touch it when, yeah. you know, they'll be like, stop touching my shit. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so it was cool to just, you know, put it on, you know, put in your little rock star. And uh, uh, yeah, so it was cool and just listening to the their bands and, and it just they were my family, so to me it was just pretty awesome to uh, to have that around me. So right on, <coughs> Senor. Well, I've been playing uh, musical instruments since I was a kid uh, in elementary school, junior high, high school. Just different types of instruments, from brass instruments, woodwinds, drums, and uh, but it wasn't the moment that I felt like this music is for me was uh, watching La Bamba, <laughs> Richard Valens. Uh, that's when. Uh, I got really inspired to just this. This, this, this is my life. Right on. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Richie. Miss Clavis. And I, little puppet. I don't think I really, you know, I just remember being young and lining up all my like little like uh, dolls and bears and stuff and throwing a show for them. I was say, I was singing to them. Yeah, but you know, now we're the dolls. at the time, you know, I just, now you're the dolls, <laughs> and they'd all come alive yeah. and just dance with me. No, but. <laughs> Yeah, so I really don't, you know, I mean, I was really young when I used to do that. And I guess I don't really think I really knew what I was really doing. I just loved it. And as I got older, I used to watch Manuel play. Um, I'm actually his niece. And, That's uh, right. We, I was going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. We, we grew up like brother and sister, so we're pretty close in age. And so he uh, he played every instrument growing up. So I would sit down and watch him. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I was just fascinated by like live music. Like my family would be like walking and I don't know, we'd be like at the county fair and there'd be a band playing and I'd just be like, Whoa, that's what's so you know, cool. what is this? So that's I, I just kind of knew like I wanna do that. That's what I wanna do. So here I am. Nice. Okay. So from there, I wanted to talk about your favorite show memory as June Clavis and Diddy Boys. Ooh, How long has this gosh. lineup been together? Uh, this lineup? Yeah. This lineup. Okay. This lineup. Tina, when did you come in? 
in October. I came in mm -hmm. in October. Blocking Our it. first gig was in November. Of 2020. 20, 20, yeah, just one year. One year, so last year. Damn, Tino. New boy. It seems like we've been together longer, man. That's why you guys are here now. Congrats. That's, that's a great thing. That's a good feeling. It's because I'm old. Yeah, we're all hey, man. No, no school like the old school, right? Cheers. We're, yeah, we're, cheers we're, to that. You're, you're done already? Yeah. <laughs> I don't hold drinks. I drink a lot. Yes, I guess a year. <laughs> this lineup has been together about a year. Really? I thought it was longer than that. I thought so, too. Well, this you're... lineup. This lineup. Okay. Because we went through a few players, you know, as, as the years went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, musicians, I know. <laughs> I, I used to front a, a cover band that... It was the best name I ever came up with. It was called Revolving Door. <laughs> <laughs> over seven years, over seven years, me and the lead guitarist were the only original people over seven years. It started as a seven piece and went down to a four piece. We went through seven drummers, ended up back at number two. Went through four keyboards, ended up no keyboards. Went, you know, every, ba every week was like, who's playing bass this week? And they'd oh, show wow. up five minutes before the show, <laughs> plug in, you know, that. Because we were cover gigs, so, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah, gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. Um, so then, your favorite show memory as June Clavis and the D Diddy Boys, and it could be like one that went off the rails, somebody went to jail, you, you checked off <laughs> your rock, story you, you checked off rock star, you know, yeah. list. What, are, what is that for you, that the one you, you love to pull out and say, oh, this one time? I think, I think both are record releases for me because the first one, we had Pretty Pack House. Um, it was in Whittier, and so our first album is called Don't Tell Mama, and so that was in August of 2019? 2019, yeah. And then uh, the second album is... That was November of 2019. November of 2019. Yeah, November 2019. Um, and then the new one, How Long For You. Uh-huh, came out last uh, year. Came out last year. Did it? And yeah. I didn't see anything about that. I'm sorry. What's <laughs> the new one called? How Long. How Long For You. Howling for you. <laughs> I, I apologize. I'll make sure to put a link down in the description Check for it. Because we have some of the. Oh, I would have said there. something. <laughs> I, I would have said something in the intro if I caught that. All right, <laughs> cut that. Cut that. Cut oh, and then no. so, <laughs> <laughs> you it all, no, it all stays in. So, so, so our second record release, we also got Slim Jim Phantom to play with us. Yes, we nice. did. So his band I played his trio. So it was, it was pretty cool to just kind of have him there because I mean all of us pretty much grew up with. Stray Cats and right. That's right. All that stuff. Yeah. So that was mm -hmm. the, both record releases. But every single show we play, we have a great time. Yeah. So if it's, you know, a couple of people there or if it's a packed house, we always just have a blast. And so, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say last night. <laughs> we out the last night. Yeah. yeah. That's totally that was awesome. legitimate. That, that was a good show. But I, for me, I'd have to say uh, we played the whiskey mm -hmm. right before oh, COVID. Right. We played the, the week of NAM. So. All the musicians oh, were there. It was a diverse like group of just artists playing. Uh, that was uh, Willie yeah, Nelson. Willie Nelson's granddaughter, uh, Raylan Nelson. She had her band, and so they were. Were they debuting there as well? They're supposed to be the headliners, but we ended up having yeah, we had a full house and they did. Yeah, yeah every, every, well, that's we, uh, isn't yeah. that the headliners' curse that like yeah, it's the middle act that gets the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that was a fun night. I was, yeah, that was a fun night. I think that was the most drunk I played. Oh, yeah. at, at one point, don't the, do the that. You play. New musician, <laughs> new musicians, you don't do that. Yeah, yeah. I threw my bass in the Only air. Only the whiskey. You yeah. threw your bass in the air. Yeah. All right, Chris Novoselic. Right. And mind you guys. If you guys aren't familiar with it, that was an upright bass an that he threw up in the air. Yeah. 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 Maybe don't do that. Uh, threw band it up, <laughs> spun it, caught it, and kept playing. You know. I think okay, you caught it and kept playing. That, then that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was time to it was like, lead into the song. You know what I mean? I've never seen that, though. I've seen all sorts of stuff with upright basses and, and where you're just like, oh, oh you're beautiful. Jump on it. And you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know the, the, the Hard Times magazine, that like uh, satire? I think it's so. It's like the onion. Yeah. So there was this article where it was like, uh, bass players first want to perform a kickflip off a of, uh, <laughs> bass. <laughs> nice. Stupid shit like that. I love it. Sorry, you were going to say? I forgot. Oh. No, your favorite your show. Favorite was... show memory. I think my favorite shows are actually the ones where, um, where we're just... We'll show up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, for, like, um, tight. Because sometimes we vibe off of the audience, but like, you know, when you're a touring band, you sit there and you're just going into a venue and there's like hardly any people there. To me, it's just like, okay, we play for ourselves. It's a paid rehearsal. It's a well, paid rehearsal, but we're just playing, like, this is how we grow as a, as a band. So we, we vibe up we off each other. Sometimes each it's other. the crowd and then other times it's just right. us. We yeah. got each other to do it so off. So then it's just fun. like, you know, we just have that 
it becomes a little bit more intimate because we're out of our home environment. We're someplace that we've never been to before. And then here we are just like, well, what do we do? Well, let's make the music sound the way it's supposed to sound for ourselves. Yeah, right on. So right. because we, we developed kind of like a more spiritual connection. <coughs> yeah. Five, five piece family when they're around the road. Five yeah. piece family. There's I, a, there's an album name. Actually, that um, <laughs> yeah. that St. Patrick's Day show was like really good too. At the uh, they're they're generally like Hollywood, pretty good. Hollywood Legion with the oh Jeff yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. that was good yeah, too. Once you start getting people dancing, then then you know like, yeah just, yeah yeah we have to, yeah, do you do you have the good. same problem I had uh, being right. when I was fronting the the cover band Revolving Door. People would be dancing, and you'd be like, "Hey, let's go ahead and do this song that's exactly like this other song yeah, to dance it to," and they would sit it. down. We <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We try, no. We, we try to keep I, them going. I never, I never understood <laughs> yeah. that. But yeah. every single time, they'd be like, "Oh, we were dancing for that one song. We were dancing yeah. for Brown Eyed Girl, yeah. but now you're playing Mustang Sally, and you know, no. <laughs> screw you." All right, <laughs> hey, we're not chunking up for, for Mustang Sally. <laughs> Neither's the band, honey. Anyway, um, so. From from there, I want to get a little bit more introspective, if you don't mind. Send it. Yeah, send, send it. Full send. Um, if you uh, let's start a fight. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're talking to the right people. Exactly. <laughs> let's go. No. Um, if you could change one thing about the LA music scene, what would it be? Oh man. Go. Oh, no man. pay for play. Yeah. Yeah, pay for play can kiss my ass. Yeah. For for real. Uh, yeah, all, and, and, you, all you venues out there that think that musicians are just, just grow overnight and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that they don't put their time, blood, sweat, all their soul into what they do, like, you know, you're probably in the wrong industry or inviting musicians because, uh, I don't yeah. know. Well, I think if they have a venue, if there's a venue like that, it's they can't draw their own people mm-hmm. to come into their place. Yeah. So they use the bands and it. With the bands get people who care. The bands are paying them, you know. So that's their crowd. Right. So it seems like yeah. the venue is actually. And the only way to fight it is to not go or not not book those shows. Right. Yeah. Right. Town's the last one to get yep. compensated. Yeah. Right. So. so we're talking about like specifically LA. Well, I said LA because that's where you play, right? But you know, go for but it. But sadly, I mean, LA is a huge, yeah. huge music scene, and yeah. a lot of venues in LA. That's a we mm-hmm. we're from LA, but we really don't play LA. So if you see us in LA, like you know, it's no, pretty you rare. Like La- <laughs> no, really, Los Angeles area, Hollywood area, we you you know, it's rare that you catch us. We'll be there next week, by the way. So come this out, will not go out the American. Oh, okay, <laughs> we're playing the Americana um, Festival, so we'll be there doing hotel that, cafe. but at yeah. the Hotel Cafe. But um, yeah, that's probably gonna be one of the last times we see this there in a while because we travel a lot too. But the LA scene, yeah, they need but, to work on that pay to play thing. I don't think so. Yeah, I would say the support from you know just the scene itself because with LA, with that being said, it's it's very saturated. You don't go anywhere and you can see so many shows. Try so, being in Vegas. Yeah, well, that's the <laughs> things like so. I think it's just people are spoiled. You know, but uh-huh. if you go to like a small town spot, it's, like everyone, everyone goes out. It's like, oh, yeah. band's coming, yeah. band's yes. coming. Everyone gets out of here. Yes. They're from the, they're from the city. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, exactly. The big city. And I, I hear that from bands that are from here as well. Yeah. Like, if you want to make money, you want to grow a base. You don't play here all the time. Yeah, yeah. You play out. You're, you're like, it's still great to be home. That's that's fine. That's cool. Yeah. But you go and you do tours, and the, all the bands that are just killing it. Are the ones that go on tour, even if it's just like, oh, we're running to California and back. You know, we're just doing a weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're still doing it. You're That's growing right. yeah. your your market, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a sad thing. It is a music business. Yeah. yeah. And the, when you have such oversaturation, it's there's only you know so much to go around. I yeah. think I think if if we would, we would focus more like our music education, right, and even taking it to the small communities ethnic communities that don't have money, you know, and just make sure kids have the chance to pick up an instrument and play something. Mm -hmm. We have music teachers that are, you know, being backed up by the Department of Education or their district and everything to like, hey, you know, it's important that these kids learn how to play an instrument just as much as they have the opportunity to engage in sports. Yeah. Yeah, they lost that. Like, Uh, because we we don't really recognize it. You know, it comes down Mm -hmm. to like, you know, future musicians that are just kids in their guitar, yeah. in their garages with their guitars and drums and just like, 
you know, sweating it out. Yeah. Right. Because I still, if I don't sweat on the drums, then I'm not doing it right. You yeah. Know? That's how I kind of look at it. But I don't even need to play drums. I could just touch a cymbal and start leaking. <laughs> but anyways, that's a whole nother game thing. But, but no, I think music education is like, we really, really need to kind of <laughs> hang on. Up. One great thing to uh, Apparently my dog is, it, it, it doesn't agree with me. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Maybe he's just saying right. 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 Chloe, right. Chloe, Right. Oh, <laughs> she she does this every like every so often on an interview she'll just pipe up and I got to figure out what what she's saying and put it on the screen. Yeah. And what? But These that, are five five seconds. That, that's all I got to say. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um. You know what? Apparently my dog wants to go outside and chase a rat or something. Good. So, uh, I'm almost empty. We're gonna do a quick little little uh, little booze break here, and uh, I think we have a message from future Josh. So booze break. Booze break. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. You know, the Earth is pretty great. Humans and their technology, on the other hand, not so much. We've kind of treated it a little poorly. I do believe I'm on fire. Now, obviously, I'm a big fan of technology and innovation. That being said, is there a way to have my tech and protect the Earth at the same time? Yep. It's called Nimble, and it's awesome. Nimble is a computer tech brand committed to creating high quality, eco-friendly tech products at lower costs. They offer wireless charging products, 18 watt USB type C portable chargers, personal device protective cases, cables, and more. All made from plant-based bioplastics, fabric made from 100% organic hemp and recycled PET from plastic bottles, recyclable aluminum, and zero paints or toxic substances. Nimble's plastic-free packaging is 100% recycled scrap paper with no harmful inks, adhesives, or dyes, making it 100% compostable. To accomplish all of this, Nimble focuses on beautiful design and leading performance, using sustainable materials for products and packaging, holding suppliers to strict guidelines, providing transparency around production and pricing, and addressing the growing problem of electronic waste through a recycling initiative tied to the purchase of every product. They're awesome, and they're going to help the planet. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off your entire order. Just enter the coupon code CHARGE10 at checkout. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Nimble for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back! And you know what? <laughs> <laughs> We're back. I say that every time. Yeah. Okay. We're fine. Well, no, because I, I, I... Oh, I get it. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Interview's going great. So, <laughs> if that sponsor spot interested you at all, please consider clicking the link down in the description for it. Uh, it, it helps the channel, helps me out, helps you out. Win, win, win. I appreciate you. Now then, back to y'all. What's up next on the horizon for June Clivus and the Diddy Boys? Um, yeah. No, I did. I just pulled my drink. <laughs> We have a few shows coming up. Uh, we'll be posting them up. So if you'd like to check out what we're up to next, because we got things going on every week, um, or try it every week or so, um, check up our Instagram. Our website is really up to date. Um, What's the website? The website is juneclivisandthediddyboys.com. Well, everything is June Clivis and the Diddy Boys. So that's Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. the website, mm -hmm. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. No MySpace. Sorry. Facebook and MySpace. <laughs> yeah, I still have a MySpace. <laughs> Bring it back. Mr. Tom. Dinner. Anyway. So not sure when this is going to air, but um, we got invited to play out at the Jackalope Jamboree uh, Music Festival out in Pendleton, Oregon. So we will be out that way if anybody watching is up that way. Um, and we'll be going up across uh, the... The up north, what is it, the Bay Area? Pacific, Northwest. Yeah, so catch us along the area. We'll have all dates coming up and um, venues we'll be at. So you'll be able to see that. Come on down. Come on down. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you a question really just for June. Okay? Why, uh, why the stage name? Oh, um... Well, well, I guess what I really should say is, why June Clivus? Where did that come from? Because okay. that's not her name. Oh, he did his homework. Oh, yeah. oh, he revealed something he was not supposed to reveal. I didn't say what the name was. <laughs> I didn't should, say what the name was. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, so... You know, you um, have my ex-wife's you know, first name. <laughs> Don't get my I've, I've been in many, uh, many, many uh, rock bands before this establishing June Clivus and the Diddy Boys. And um, because of that, I wanted to start, to start something fresh. 
someone where if they saw, if they walked into the, the venue that I was playing at, they couldn't say, oh, Sin's here. Hey! <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, they couldn't say that they, they would know it was me. So I wanted it to be a surprise. I wanted to start fresh where nobody knew who this person, June, was, you know, and um, come out because it was something new they just heard, but not because they've already, they already knew who I was. So, um, but why, where did the name June Clivus come from? Yeah, so I wanted something new, and so I thought, okay, I need to give myself a stage name that I can, you know, for this person. And so I was laying in bed, and well, my birthday is in June. So I was like, hey, June's a cute name for a country girl. So, (laughs) 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 yeah, (laughs) so that's where June came from. And then um, Clivus, I, you know, I can't even find it in the dictionary anymore. So it's really funny how I found it. I was looking for something cool for a last name. And one day I found something. That, it was something to do with the short song or something to do with the song. So I was just like, huh. So I really don't even know it's supposed to be pronounced Clivus, Clivus, whatever. But I pronounce it Clivus. So it's June well, Clivus. She corrected me and it may not even be right. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And well, then um, it, it was supposed to be yeah, a solo. At first, it was supposed to be just a solo thing because I've always been in rock bands. Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what? It's so hard dealing with a full band. Let me try the solo thing for a minute. Yeah. And because I love the sound of the bass, the drums, you know, like everything coming together, I just couldn't stay away from it. We, we started a three-piece then where it was me, Manny, um, and our drummer at the time. And I still wanted more. And I thought, hey, well, now that I'm bringing in more people, I'm going. it can't be just June Clivus. So one night I was staying in bed and I was looking for names that had to do with um, songs because they were supposed to be like short, simple songs. And I found Diddy, the word Diddy, short, simple song, literally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so June Clivus and the Diddy Boys, that's how that happened. And that makes sense. All of it. <laughs> I, it was just what, the Clivus. I was like, but I didn't realize that was the actual word. It is a word. Well, and, it was anyway. Yeah. And now I can't find it. So I don't know how that happened. Well, you know what? If I can <laughs> find it, I'll put it up here. Bam. Bazinga. So... <laughs> Um, now, you guys also kind of have stage names, right? Yes. Who's Papa? Oh, oh no, he's no longer with us. Well, he's Ooh. not dead. <laughs> <laughs> he's just not playing with us. Yeah. You're either in or you're out. Yeah. All stays in. All stays in. Tino so, came already with a stage name. He gave us his real name, and he's like, this is what they call me, so that's what so we Tino's call him. So Tino's not your um, really? It's been my nickname since birth. No, it's a great, it's, it's yeah. great, especially for a drummer. Yeah, but if you, bon Jovi. But if you just spell it backwards, it's on it. Boom! Uh, <laughs> on oh, it. Wait, oh, Tino. I was hearing Tito the whole time. Yeah, Tino. Uh, so on Tino. It. So that's on it. <laughs> that's O Tit. Backwards. It is. Tito. O Tit. Anyway. O Tit is on it. Anybody else? Got yeah, a all, of, all of them got Well, uh, let, my, let Tits no, now. <laughs> let Tits now. Let it snow. Let yes, it yes. <laughs> it's an old joke, sir, but it checks out. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, I go by Zach Rabbit. Um, I actually started my own solo thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> you shoot it, Rabbit. Yeah, came from uh, Zach Rabbit Slim. And it was supposed to be Zach Rabbit Slim and the Wrecking Boppers. Um, I got busy with another band and this band, so that kind of took a back seat. The Wrecking Boppers? Wrecking Boppers, yes. I just want to make sure I heard that. Was it Rockabilly? It's it's a mixture of rockabilly and psychobilly. So you got songs that make you dance and songs that make you name like, yeah, yeah. Name, name like that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. So it was gonna be like I mean coming into the scene, one of my like biggest influences was like Gambler's Mark. So they're able to like thin the line between the rockabilly and psychobilly. So I wanted to be able to hit both worlds. Something similar to that. Right. You know on. what I mean? And Zach Rabbit Slim is a play off of a restaurant in my favorite movie, which was Pulp Fiction, which is. Jack Rabbit Slim's yes. um, the shakes time machine car hop better be so. a, better be a goddamn good shake oh yeah seven <laughs> bucks or whatever was it bet your ass it is yeah bet your ass it is yeah so no, but no. that kind of took a back seat so I just I dropped the slim part of it and just right. kept Zach Rabbit so because yeah. slim wouldn't work anybody else yeah, he's not slim anymore oh, oh hey hey hey, hey. 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 <laughs> and uh, I guess the way that came up was. Uh, I was switching between mandolin and banjo, mandolin and banjo so much, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think it was you that... Yeah, yeah. When, when he had mandolin, we called him uh, mandolin. Man- yeah. <laughs> and then when he went to banjo, then I started calling him uh, mandolin. Banjo. We called him banjo. <clears throat> nice. And he also uh, he also makes banjos and cigar boxes. Oh, yes, oh, he does. Make them. Yes, yes, he does. Right on. Luthier over here. <laughs> and, and you, sir, do you have a uh, Johnny Dynamite. So uh, <laughs> nice. I should introduce you to uh, a local guy who's 
amazing, uh, amazing piano, uh, like lounge singer guy named mm. Johnny Fabulous. Nice. <laughs> together, you two would be just that would be funny. Dynamite, dynamite, <laughs> fabulous, dynamite. See, I got it from, from the show, Good Times, yes. from back in the day, and uh, so the character, his name was JJ. Yes, it was. And my parents called me JJ. Do you know what the JJ stood for? Um, yeah, I do. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> you say for I know. know. Like, I, tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's Jimmy James. Sure. Sure. <laughs> His, the first one's Jimmy. No, actually, it's for uh, Juan Jose. <laughs> yeah. Juan Jose Dynamite. <laughs> Good, folks. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, Dynamite. But it's, and it's not Dynamite with an A, it's with an O. Because when you say it, you gotta say Dynamite. Oh. That's right. <laughs> he was also big into uh, dinosaurs back in the day. Dinosaurs. Yeah, I still am. We've done so so now, <laughs> now, now, that we've ta- now that we've completely gone over the head of all the, the entire <laughs> audience. You see, kids, there used to be this show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> there used to be these things called cassette tapes. Um, eight, eight track. Eight track. Eight track. I'm just kidding. Seven. I'm 50. I'm aware. Uh, so, real to real. at the time, this, whenever this video comes out, things will have already transpired, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about them anyway. Um, if you're watching this and you want to see the live stream of this, I'll put the link down in the description because I'm a masochist and I don't do enough editing already. Um, but I feel that I <laughs> on May sixth, I'm going to be putting on something called the Room Six Rocks Spring Showcase, uh, which is also named Revenge of Room Six because you know, yeah, yeah. May six, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Star Wars. So uh, that's going to be at Hennessy's Tavern down on Fremont Street Experience uh, in Las Vegas, and uh, it's going to be amazing. I want to have five acts. The reason I'm saying this is that if you want to check it out, definitely check it out. And if you want to be part of the channel and be part of one of these showcases, hit me up. Now then, we're almost done. Good news, you, you almost made it, yay. <laughs> so, if you made it this far, <laughs> hit the like and subscribe. <laughs> Do what the man says. Bing. Um, oh, that was for you guys. <laughs> You're almost yeah. done. So, did you all, how many of you are like native to LA? Anybody? Yeah. You are. All Born and raised. Mm -hmm. We bring to LA, wherever we go. <coughs> That's Pardon me. Ooh, Sorry, audio, audio guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So, the reason I ask is, the rest of you that aren't native to LA, where did you come from and what drew you to LA? Were you moved by parents or something? Or were you... We're all, we're all, yeah, we're, we're all, 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 we're all, all native. native. Oh, because I didn't see hands from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hands. He's not head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, we're all from LA. Oh, okay, cool. Never mind then. I was kicked <laughs> off the spaceship. That's where the psycho Billy comes from. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, Una más question. What's Ready? It? Okay. Now, I asked this of all my friends. The answer is always 42. Yes. Which, by the way, in the ASCII, 42 adds up to the word map. Mm, yes. I can sure. nerd. I anyway. told you. Sure. <laughs> So, <laughs> we're going to circle on back to that first question about your earliest musical influences. Okay. Let's pretend, and this is a question I ask of all my prey. Let's pretend that we're talking to little you. Okay? And, and really what we're doing is we're talking to new musicians. But what is one thing that you wish someone had told you, you know, that before you went down this twisted road called music? What is one, one piece of advice you wish that you could have given your younger self? And don't say change your strings. Stay away from that girl. <laughs> you know the one I'm talking about. I wrote a whole album about that girl. <laughs> stay, stay away from that bassist. You know what you want. <laughs> Too late. For the younger musician who really is passionate about music and you have people telling you it's not a real thing, you know, get out there and do it. Get a real job. If it's your passion, go make it happen. Don't let other things get in the way that they tell you they want you to do. Do what makes you happy. Go play music. Definitely. But also be able to pay the bills. Of course. Because, <laughs> you know, making music and, and knowing that your bills are paid is way better than making music and wondering where you're going to sleep. Absolutely. There's got to be a balance. Yeah. But definitely don't let other people influence you into not doing what you love is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Right. No, I know. I, I get it. it it's, that, it's that whole tightrope we all walk up. And if you need a help with checks, call, call this guy. 
Help me. <laughs> Checks. Or bills. Bills. I'll call this guy. How about new? <laughs> All right. So, were you serious about that? Stay away from the base. That was your answer. No. Okay. <laughs> you were, but you were serious about staying from that girl. <laughs> I mean, I think that's just more of like. A general thing. That's a general thing. life advice to every, yeah. every kid out there. Stay from that girl. Yeah. Uh, well, it's always the girl's fault, man. Oh, no. I mean, everyone Everyone has a lot of learning and growing to go through and, and whatnot, and I think it's important. But, um, no, as as a musician, just don't, don't be an elitist. Don't pigeonhole yourself into one group. Uh, or in one genre, you know, because I mean, especially as a musician, you will grow the more diff- the more types of uh, genres you throw yourself into, mm-hmm. you know, because that was the thing, I mean, you know, being a metalhead, it's like, oh yeah, you're a poser if you don't listen to this or whatever, Right. but then you open up, you go into ska and rockabilly and psychabilly, mm-hmm. you know, go into like the reggae, R&B, you know, because I mean, if you throw influences from everywhere, you'll get some really good sounding music. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. but you will never know that if you get if you just stay in one spot. Yeah. Exactly, and I think that's what we all did because if you ask it, all of us, we all had a band that's like a different, way you know, different genre, right? Punk, yeah. rock, jazz, mm-hmm. and so I think all of us put together, we we uh, we just kind of do our thing, add our stuff and our instruments, and it comes out as new vibes and video ways. And I think that's what makes style. us who we are and different than a um, little different than what you're hearing out there right now because we're not one specific genre and fall into one sort of pocket. Right. So, so every every other genre as us, as we all grew up was basically our, our training mm-hmm. to that led up to this mm-hmm, to I add our that. style. So you know there's again there's some metal in here, there's some punk, there's alternative, there's jazz. Mm-hmm. Um, all that was the road for us to <clears throat> get here and just do what we do together. Yeah. Definitely, and and I know, uh, especially younger new musicians, it's so important that you wrap your head around this concept. No matter what you're doing, if you're doing music, you're progressing. Yeah. No, no matter, even if you're doing just practicing that one part of the song over and over and over and over and over and over, mm-hmm. you're going to nail that thing. Even if you're, man, I can't believe we're playing this dive bar. We're each making twenty five bucks for you know. Two hours Let's of do it. It's part know, of the training. It's it it, it <laughs> is pain. It sucks. It's pain to do this, but also you can't have stories without living them. Yeah. You know, can't you know? Everybody wants to have the adventure. No one wants to have the dangerous parts. It's mm-hmm. that kind of thing. But it's same with you know. Yeah. Nobody started out a genius. No, nobody started out great at, at what they do. Yeah. And uh, I, this is all I know. This is, you've heard all this before. Yeah. yeah climb that mountain. But we're we're here to tell you. You know. And so, there you go. Uh, gentlemen on the ends. Yes. Advice for Lily. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, definitely. I, I think we um, got these three. Just um, if if you have the passion for music and um, you stick to it, like like he said, I mean, you, you have to put in your hours. It's not going to come overnight. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know. Don't, and, and don't stick to just one instrument either. If, if you think you want to be the, you know, Eddie, next Eddie Van Halen, um, even he was into other instruments, and he could play other instruments very well. I have a story so, about that. Go ahead. Um, try other instruments out, even mm-hmm. if you want, you know. Yeah. The most inspirational moment I ever heard of, Neil Peart. We all know who Neil yes, Peart was, right? Peart. Neil Peart, height of his fame with Rush. Decided, oh, you know what? I need to go get some lessons from fundamentals from drumming. Imagine being that teacher. <laughs> like, oh, what? <laughs> uh, I grew up learning how to play like you. You want me to teach you? But yeah, no matter how big you are, lessons are a thing or just uh, practice. Ozzy Osbourne's, Randy Rhodes, who took a lesson everywhere he went. That's if, true. If he I was forgot on about tour, him. he took lessons from mm. teachers everywhere he was at. And that's why he was one of the groundbreakers. That's awesome. Down to you, Tino. Um, I just say take a risk. You're take what? Gonna, yeah, just take the risk. You're not going to know what it's going to be like until you just get out there and start doing it. You That's know? true. And Don't be also, afraid to fail. Sometimes the toughest criticism is the best criticism because you really get to see um, perspectives as to how to approach music. There is no right or wrong. Um, like Zach Hyman just said, you know, like everyone's just be as diverse as you can 
and have a, have a, a genuine, authentic love to play. And because you don't have to read music, you just gotta love it and feel it. And it, I think that's the most important part is just developing the feel. That's totally true. Um, Dave Grohl is a perfect uh, uh, example that he never took music theory. He plays his guitar like a drum set. He even said so. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he just found what worked for him. So, yeah. And honestly, uh, for me, my advice to younger me or, or to especially young current me, because every week I deal with this, I deal with imposter syndrome every week okay. at least once. Uh, and, and that's just being a, a creator in general. But yeah. we're all insecure bundles of hope and, and nervousness and, and fear of failure and fear of success. It's all of it. And it's just part of being human. And when it feels overwhelming, go practice. Just go go work on something and, and you'll you know accomplish something. Whether it's I worked on my fundamentals or I I, I practiced that new song I've been meaning to learn or I, I practiced a song I wrote. Or I wrote a new song, whatever it is. So, all right, that's enough soapboxing. I think we've all uh, done good work here. All right, <laughs> gentlemen and lady, thank you very much for being on the channel. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Please, please check out the description for the social media links, uh, or just anywhere you're going to be able to find them online for June Clavis and the Diddy Boys. Stick around. We're going to see a music video from them, and I'll see you in the outro. And uh, yeah, other than that. I think we'll temporarily say goodbye. Thank you for having yeah, us. Thank you. Clink. Clink. Yeah. Cut that, cut that, cut that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs>
I want to thank June Clavis and the Diddy Boys for dropping by. It was a great interview and an awesome music video, and uh, I hope that we'll get to see them again soon. In the meantime, keep an eye out. Subscribe somewhere. Uh, keep an eye out. I'm going to be doing a review of their album, Howl For You. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe, click up there, and don't forget to ring the bell, and I appreciate all of you. And if you want to hear my own music, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time in Room 6.